Hey there, my name is Justin and last time we were together for our seven series we were thinking about the sin of self-righteousness. Self-righteousness where we, we trust in our own goodness before God. We think that we can stand before him based on all the things that we've done and we look around at others and realise that we're slightly better than them so we can look down on them rather than saying, actually, Lord have mercy, we are all sinners in need of grace. So in this message, uh, a linked theme perhaps, but I want us to think about the sin of self-reliance. The sin of self-reliance. So if self-righteousness is trusting in our own goodness, then maybe self-reliance is trusting in our own strength. Most people, I think, listening, whether you would say you're a follower of Jesus or not, will probably say that self-righteousness isn't a good thing. When we see that attitude in others, it tends to repel us a little bit. But self-reliance, well, surely that's something that's celebrated it's something that we, we train our children up in to be reliant on themselves, to be independent. It's something that we uh, enjoy. But I wonder how many of you are a little bit like me. And when you get lost, you struggle to ask for directions. Nope, I can do this. We will find this. Uh, it took me quite a while before I was willing to admit I actually do need to look at the instructions for DIY furniture. I just had this mindset that I should just know how to put this together. I wonder how many of you struggle to really ask for help when you need it. That's, that's me. One of our first camping holidays that me and my wife Liz had, we, we, we took our little setup away and we pulled up onto the campsite and our pitch was next to this guy who had everything. Huge tent, sun loungers, big fire pit, wind breaks all the way around to stop everybody nosing in, although I did have a little look up over the top and have a look at his setup. I mean, he just had it all. As we were unpacking, got the tent up, got the sleeping bags out, got the air beds up, I realised I'd forgotten the pump. Now to me, well to Liz, the solution for this problem was obvious. Go next door and ask the guy who clearly has everything if we can borrow his pump. To me, the solution was obvious. Do not admit in any way, shape or form that you have forgotten anything and try and blow up the air buds with your lungs. If you are wondering whether it's possible to blow up air beds with your lungs, no, no, it is not. I gave it a really good go, but all I achieved was becoming very dizzy and very red in the face until I finally had to admit that it was time to man up, admit my need, and send Liz to ask if we could borrow his pump. (laughs) I think as humans, we just get caught into the trap of thinking that we should be enough and sufficient on our own. And yet I wonder if our view of self-reliance is actually stopping what God wants to do in us and through us. I want us to narrow in on this little passage in the book of Galatians that the Apostle Paul writes. And I want us to think about this uh, in the view of being self-reliant. Before we get to the passage, though, I want you to know Paul, Paul's a tough kind of guy. He's a resilient kind of guy. He's not somebody that you would uh, call weak. I think he probably could blow up his own airbeds and he certainly wouldn't have forgotten his pump. <laughs> He says in 2 Corinthians this, he says he's been in prison. He's been whipped with 39 lashes five times. He's been beaten with rods three times. He's been shipwrecked three times and he's been stoned once. So he's a pretty tough, strong kind of guy to be able to get through all of that and keep going. Yet he writes this letter to the church in Galatia. And here's what he says. He says, as you know, 
It was because of an illness that I first preached the gospel to you. And even though my illness was a trial to you, you did not treat me with contempt or scorn. Instead, you welcomed me as if I were an angel of God, as if I were Christ Jesus himself. Where then is your blessing of me now? I can testify that if you could have done so, you would have torn your eyes out and given them to me. Three things that I want to pull out from this little passage. And the first one is this. Paul says it was my weakness, but God's direction. Paul says to the church in Galatia, the reason I first preached to you was because I was sick. The reason I preached to you was because I was sick. We conclude that Paul was on his travels, but he had to stop for a while because he was too unwell to keep going. And that stopping stopped in Galatia. You know, so often we have our plans, don't we, of things that we're going to do, of how life's going to go out, of where we're going to go, of what we're going to do, of things that we can do in our own strength. And then life brings us up short and weakness or circumstance or illness or difficulty kind of comes in and it stops us going where we think we want to go. But, you know, sometimes God is allowing that to happen because through it, he is directing us and put us where he wants us to be. I wonder what would happen if Paul had gone, no, I'm not ill. Just, just get me the bucket. We're going to keep on going. No, I don't need to stop. No, I don't need anybody to look after me. I'm going to power through this illness. Maybe he would have carried on past Galatia. But he has to admit, I'm sick and I have to stop. And in that stopping, he interacts with the church in Galatia. Proverbs 3, 5 to 6 says this, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, submit to him and he will make your paths straight. It's a great scripture when we're thinking about self-reliant, of not relying on our own understanding, but relying on God's. But you know, it's easy to trust in God's plan when things seem to be working out, when you've got the strength you need for the task ahead, when things are going well and nothing is stopping you. But what about when things aren't going to plan? What about when you don't have the strength to carry on? What about like when, Paul, we've got something in mind, but we find ourselves having to stop because we can't carry on? Can we submit our plans to God in those moments? Can we trust in him in those moments? Can we say, actually, maybe this circumstance right now that I am finding difficult, maybe God is using that for his plan and his purpose. Maybe I want to be over here, but there are people here that God wants me to minister Paul says to the church in Galatia, I was sick and that's how I ended up preaching to you. Maybe life isn't quite going to your plan. Maybe you're somewhere you didn't plan to be. Maybe your weaknesses and your your flaws are stopping you getting where you think you should be. And yet maybe you are right where God wants you, having to rely on others around you that he wants you to be into relationship with. Paul says it was my weakness, but it was God's direction. Second thing I want to pull out, Paul says it was my illness, but your growth. Paul says, I I first preached to you through an illness, even though my illness was a trial to you. I remember chatting to somebody once who'd had Honestly, just a horrendous journey in their life. Been through so much again and again and again. And they were back around again, facing a similar situation that they'd already been through. And they just said to me, just, what have I got left to learn? Surely by now I've learned everything through this trial that God would have me learn. Why am I still here? And I just got a sense in my heart. I was like, I, 
I think you have learned everything. I can't see what, what this is doing in you. I can't see how God is using this to, to mature you. I, I would agree with you. You have learned the lessons. And then I heard these words float out of my mouth. Now, normally when I hear words float out my mouth that my brain hasn't pre-approved, it's normally a bad thing. But I think it was a God thing in this moment. Because I just heard myself say, what if the lesson isn't for you? What if through your trial and suffering, God isn't trying to teach you anything, but there are those around you that he is trying to speak to? I think so often we think that weakness and suffering and trials are tests for the individual. But actually, they're a test for the community. An older translation of the Bible captures Paul's words like this. He says, your temptation in my flesh. Your temptation. Paul's illness wasn't actually a trial for him. It was the church in Galatia that God was testing. We don't like being in need. We don't like being vulnerable. It, 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 it's much better to be the guy who's remembered the air pump and can lend it out than the guy who's going, listen, I've forgotten something. Could you help me? I need something. We don't like that feeling. But maybe our sense of self-reliance, maybe our unwillingness to ask for help, maybe sometimes our, our, our uh, kind of arrogance to say, no, I don't want anyone to see my vulnerability. Maybe that is stopping somebody else's spiritual development. Maybe God is trying to work through your need as you need to rely on others. Maybe there's some spiritual growth that they can go on as they step in to carry your load. Paul says later on in Galatians 6 to carry each other's burdens and in this way you will fulfill the law of Christ. But how can you fulfill the law of Christ if I don't let you carry my burden? Now, I'm going to put a caveat in here because this is not an excuse to abdicate responsibility for your life and just sit back and relax and let everybody else run around you while you're being a pain in the backside. But in order for us to fulfill the law of Christ, to love one another as we love ourselves, then actually we're meant not to rely on ourselves, but to rely on each other. This takes great courage and vulnerability. At first off, for us to admit that we've got needs, to admit that there are things that we need in life that we actually don't have, that we're not self-reliant. But then it takes great courage to stay in that space with somebody, to step in and say, okay, if you're willing and vulnerable to share your burden, then I'm going to be vulnerable and step in and help. Sometimes we, we fear each other's vulnerability because if I see that you're vulnerable, it reminds me that I'm vulnerable. It's much easier to come to a gathering or to become part of a group and team and how is everybody? Oh, I'm fine. Yes, I'm fine. I'm great. I'm great. Everything's great. Rather than going, actually, there are things that I'm struggling with. But as we admit our vulnerabilities and our need for one another, we grow. Paul says to the church in Galatia, my illness was a trial to you. And yet in that trial, you grew. Imagine that the church in Galatia are carrying the burden of the one who is teaching them about Christ. You know, we need to rethink what we think about leadership and what we think about those that we can learn from. Paul says, listen, I was sick and a burden to you. And yet he's the apostle that they grow from. Are we prepared to learn from one another in our vulnerabilities? Or are we only looking to learn from people who we think are strong and have got it all together? Or do we understand that actually in each other's weaknesses, as we carry each other's burdens, we grow? So I would encourage us. Paul says, my illness, your trial. Let's share our burdens with each other and let's not get 
bored of carrying each other's load. But let's understand that that's the process that God uses as we rely on each other for us to grow. The, the test of the church in Galatia was could they sit in the brokenness with Paul and yet still learn from him? Last thing to pull out then, Paul says it was my vulnerability and our relationship. Verse 15, where then is your blessing of me now? I can testify that if you could have done so, you would have torn out your eyes and given them to me. You know, Paul is, is having to be really strong to the church in Galatia. Uh, they're straying back into self-righteousness rather than just relying on the grace of God. They've got teachers amongst them who are trying to convince them that they need to start keeping some of the Jewish laws and rules and regulations and become like the Pharisee that we thought about last time. And so Paul is having to come in strong and hard and robust with them to pull them back to the truth. But he says in this little passage, where is your blessing of me? He's saying, why aren't you listening to me? And then he leans into the relationship. He says, you would have taken your eyes out for me. I think in effect, he's saying, so now lend me your ears. <laughs> Come on, guys. I'm the guy that was sick that you nursed and you cared. And if you could have done, you would have taken your eyes out. So would you just now listen to me? As a side note, this is why we think Paul's affliction was something to do with his eyes, because of this scripture. But Paul is correcting them, but not from a position of strength or distance in relationship. He's, he's saying, come on, guys, you shared with me in my vulnerability. We've got a deep relationship here. So allow me now to speak in. I've been corrected many times in my life, and I'm sure I will need to be corrected many times more. If, we, if you're a follower of Jesus, we're supposed to hold each other accountable in our relationships. We're supposed to be able to speak strongly to one another and keep one another in the way of the truth. But, you know, the best way to do that is in relationships where we're able to share one another's burdens if we're already carrying one another's loads, if we're already open enough to be vulnerable with each other, then it's much easier to step in and speak truth to each other. Rather than just saying, oh, I'm speaking the truth in love. No, I don't need to say that because I've already cared for you. You've already cared for me. We've already shared life's difficulties. And so it's natural now for me to say, hey guys, I think I might need to pull you back this way. You're, you're wandering off a little bit. And the more we get used to being vulnerable with each other, the deeper our relationships become, and then iron can sharpen iron. We can encourage and pull one another back into the way of truth when we see each other straying off. So the, the, the sin of self-reliance. Maybe you're a little bit like me and you don't like asking for help. But what if in actually admitting I'm not always able to rely on myself, I actually don't have everything that I need. I'm not as self-sufficient as I would like to think I am. Maybe in doing that, just like Paul, God will place you where he wants you with people that he wants you with. Maybe through your needs, others actually will grow and mature in Christ as they step into that space of vulnerability and sharing burdens with you. And maybe then you will develop deep enough relationships so that we can walk together with Christ and hold each other on the path as we journey through life. So maybe, hopefully, as I've been talking, you've bought into the, the power of vulnerability and relying on others. But maybe you're still to be convinced that self-reliance is a sin. Really? Well, I'll leave you to keep pondering on that. And I accept there are moments when we need to be responsible for ourselves and take responsibility to stand on our own two feet. But the first thing in the Bible that's described as not being good is found in the second chapter of Genesis, verse 18. It is not good the Lord God said, for man to be 
alone. We weren't created to do this life alone. And sin, uh, in one of its definitions, is simply putting ourselves at the center and saying that actually we're at the center of our life. And when we're self-reliant, we're saying actually we're the center and we are all that we need. Rather than saying, actually, Jesus is at the center, but he's created us to be in relationship and to need one another. And when we deny that, we're wandering off the path that he has set for us. But when we accept and acknowledge that we need others, we can connect with people and places that God wants us to be. We grow together as we share in each other's trials and we develop deep relationships where we become more like Christ. So hey, maybe this week, Find somebody that you can rely on and be somebody that others can rely on too. God bless you. Thank you for joining us for our message. If there was something that resonated with you or you want to explore a little bit more about Jesus, then go to renewalcc.com forward slash next steps. You can fill out the form there and we can connect with you. Also, if you have a question for the team or you just want to say hello, then you can get in contact with us at hello at renewalcc.com and one of the team will be in touch with you. Also, we want you to subscribe to our YouTube channel and you can also go to renewalcc.com forward slash media where you can find our Spotify and Apple podcast channels where you can find all our messages and all our online content and there's a new episode being released every Monday. Finally, if you like the work that we do, you can also donate to Renault. If you go to renaultcc.com forward slash give, you can find all the ways in which you can give into the life of Renault. But thanks for joining us and we'll see you next time.